A good horror game is something special. It is not able just to challenge us with its gameplay or tell a good story, but to scare us, to haunt our dreams and idle thoughts, even to make us question our own perceptions of reality. In this podcast, we meet the developers of both existing popular horror titles and hotly anticipated upcoming games to discuss how they do it, what inspires them, and all things spooky and unnerving. Welcome to Talking Terror, the official podcast of the Horror Game Awards. Welcome to Talking Terror, the official podcast of the Horror Game Awards. I'm Phil. And, and I'm, I'm well. going. Uh, <laughs> we, we timed that well. As you can tell, we're uh, professional at picking these things up. Yeah. Um, yeah. Phil and Will from the Horror Game Awards. And we are joined today by Brandon Roberts from Blue and Red Games, who is uh, the creator of Ghost at Dawn, which was nominated for two Horror Game Awards last year and also. Uh, Date with the Night, which is uh, coming up soon. I uh, actually just uh, delayed it. <laughs> I, so I just announced th- I'm delaying it yesterday uh, a little oh, bit. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I saw just, the announcement. Yeah. It was, uh, but congratulations on uh, going for console, though. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, that's why I delayed it, because I'm, mm. I'm uh, self-publishing uh, Ghost of Dawn on console, so I'm doing that work myself, so I have to kind of push back the second one a little bit yeah no that's fair enough that's that's a huge undertaking given i mean we'll come to it when we're talking more about the games in general but obviously given that you also effectively rebuilt ghost of dawn uh yeah. <laughs> so uh, an awful lot of work that's got into this probably above and beyond what anyone might have expected as well um but yeah <laughs> Um, I mean, let's 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 start with you first of all. Just like talk about like kind of where you come into this and like your experience with making games and what inspired you to make these games and like where it all where it all began, I suppose. Okay, yeah. Um, I have no experience making games whatsoever uh, before making Ghost of Dawn. Um, the reason why I started getting into game dev was uh, because of COVID, sadly. Um, I am what is called a long hauler, a COVID long hauler. If you're not familiar with that, it's someone who got COVID, but the symptoms just never went away, even though I'm, you know, no longer contagious. Uh, I've been, I basically, I got COVID early in 2020 and I have, uh, chronic fatigue essentially. Mm-hmm. So I couldn't work my old job, which was like a physical job. I was a, a, a painter. I did a uh, house painting. I paint, I like literally paint anything, paint houses, paint cars, paint murals, do digital art, like anything you could do with like artistic painting or actual just application of paint on commercial things I would do. Um, So, you know, with fatigue, I I couldn't do that anymore. And so I was, you know, sitting around like everybody else during COVID, like, oh, what am I going to do? And, you know, I'm just a a big video game nerd and uh, I love the Resident Evil series and um, they stopped making the fixed cam tank control games in favor of the more action ones, which I like those too. I like, I love the new resident evils, but I I miss the old ones. And so I was like, you know, I have a background in art and and I've been a lifelong musician, you know, like a semi-pro amateur musician playing in bands and stuff at clubs and bars. Um, So I was like, I have this background art music. I just have to learn how to code. And so I taught myself how to code during the pandemic and I made a game. (laughs) And I made the, the the fixed cam Resident Evil style game that I've always wanted another one of, um, and that's ba- that's the the basic gist of how I got started with Ghost at Dawn. Yeah, so fair to say, before the pandemic happened, you would never have envisioned yourself being. No, that's like one thing I even said, I'm like, you know, I like dabbling in all the arts, you know, a little bit. And I'm like, "Ah, I don't ever want to make a game that seems too hard. (laughs) But then I was like, well, I don't have anything better to do. Let's try. (laughs) Uh, Fair enough. Um, So for anyone who might not be familiar, who's kind of hearing about this for the first time, do you want to give 
a bit of an overview of uh, Ghost of Dawn and what it's about, essentially. Yeah, it's a, uh, like I, I said, it, it, it riffs heavily on the old Resident Evils where it's set in a uh, abandoned building, like an Art Deco, or it's got creepy designs and like that, you know, it's not Victorian, but it, it, it's more Art Decos. It's set in the 40s. So anyway, it's the fixed cam survival horror, but it's got an anime aesthetic. Um, and it's uh, set in 1947. It's starring a uh, Japanese-American private investigator named Ben O'Hara, who uh, is hired to hire or hired to find a missing immigrant girl that because you know, she's undocumented. She came over on a boat and it's in, in a post-war America, post-World War II America is very anti-Japanese kind of racist era in the country because we fought against the Japanese. Um, they, they, the police just don't care that she's missing. So he's like the only one that will find her because he's Japanese American. And he, he himself is a World War II vet, a uh, Japanese American who fought um, for, with the Americans against the Germans in Europe. So long story short, um, you know, it's your basic Resident Evil gameplay. You're searching for a missing girl in a haunted hotel and uh, there's twists and turns and, you know, you have to <laughs> solve puzzles and find items and manage resources and, and fight the undead similar to, you know, Alone in the Dark or Resident Evil. Yeah, I was, I think from, from the off, I was quite intrigued by that angle of um, like when I was playing it about Ben O'Hara and obviously change his name specifically to like be able to still work despite the fact that he's Japanese and, and that whole yeah. of stuff. And where did that, did that come from anywhere in particular or was that just kind of a thing you thought would be? Um, my, my wife's a uh, history major and in, in buff, like she's got a few degrees in history. And so um, she studied like people's history more, like not so much like generals and politicians and wars and stuff, but like, the lives of real people and just one thing she always talked about that i found was interesting was like the idea of passing in america for non-whites that you know there's a long history of non-white people trying to look or change their name um to be more anglo-centric um to blend in and, and fit in in our culture to kind of bypass that racism so you know the character's real name is ohada benjudo and he just, you know, kind of shifts that to Ben O'Hara. It's, you know, mm -hmm. the same, it's the same name, but he makes it sound Irish or, or you know, to, uh, more American sounding, I guess. Um, to, to, so people won't just blow him off so he can find work. Because, mm -hmm. you know, if he used his real name right after World War II, it, you know, he... It would, <laughs> it would be hard, you know, there'd be... He, 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 and he does face a lot of resentment in it so i don't know it's just uh, something interesting you know that i thought gave depth to the character you know and you get some sympathy for him right away i guess yeah absolutely it, like i say it was it was an unusual angle and not one i'd yeah. like I, I was obviously aware of the history in terms of like the internment camps during world war ii but not so much the stuff that came afterwards and everything so yeah it was kind of interesting to see that in oh I, I mean well. yeah America's got a long history of racism, sadly, <laughs> you know, um, but, you know, and that, that was just kind of the thing where I wanted to make the, the, the missing girl, you know, in, in video games, you're always rescuing a princess or the president's daughter, like in Resident Evil 4, which is essentially a princess, <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, or someone famous or like these, these world, these big, you know, world ending stakes. And I thought, you know, it'd just be interesting if it, if it was just this one girl and it really wouldn't matter to anyone except her sister if she died or was never found, you know, mm -hmm. and, but that still matters, you know, that's still an important worthy goal. And so that was something I wanted to convey to people, you know, that the message of the game was like empathy, you know, that you should care about people and, and, and do your best. And that's why, you know, I, I tried to make Ben O'Hara like a hero and not just, you know the anti-hero that's so popular now in pop culture but like an actual like good person you know mm. cares about the the least 
the least of us, you know, the overlooked. Yeah. Um, I suppose, like, kind of still talking about, like, where these things came from and inspiration and stuff. The choice to have it, the, the enemies be ghosts, is was that just kind of like looking for a new angle for, like, survival horror, or was the, is there a particular kind of interest in, like, ghost stories and things like that? Um, well, the, I, I wanted to do ghosts um, because I, they're scary, <laughs> for one, and you can do <laughs> fun, fun jump scares with them because they're, you know, uh, more ethereal, you know what I mean? They could do hmm. weirder things than, like, just your typical zombie could. Um, but I would say the other big influence on the game, like I wanted to mix Resident Evil with PT. So I thought Lisa from PT was just super scary. Like it just yeah. found her really disturbing. And I was like, all right, what what if you did Resident Evil, but it's just a bunch of Lisas instead of uh, uh, zombies. So that was like my first thought um, to do that. And then I thought of a bunch of interesting ways, you know, instead of just managing ammo to be able to take out monsters and zombies you know you have to manage matches and incense to like to ward them off because they're spirits you know and uh you never know when they could pop up or come through a mirror or just do something really creepy you know so i thought that was really good to keep players on edge because you can never really be sure what's going to happen exactly because there's no like um physical limit is there obviously with ghosts they can fit any form or any shape or whatever yeah and you, yeah you and i try i try to make them physical enough like i, I say in the game they're uh onryo which mm -hmm. if anyone's played uh like phasmophobia uh, in japanese folklore ghosts like the onryo ghosts are physical beings but mm -hmm. you know they can still kind of like appear and disappear but i, I kind of said that so that way you can actually shoot them, <laughs> yeah. you know, and still have fun combat in the game and not just because yeah. I'm not a fan of like just hide and seek horror games. Like I like mm -hmm. the ones where you can actually fight back. And, you know, for a while I was like, oh, do I want to do like a salt gun, you know, or a shotgun that shoots salt, you know? Um, but I was like, no, nah, let's just do, let's just do World War II guns because he's a World War II vet. And uh, so they became like physical so they're kind of, they're like halfway between zombies and ghosts. Yeah, and I thought that was a, a good compromise for for gameplay reasons. Yeah, I mean, if you if you have a shotgun filled with salt, there comes a point where you're just basically making supernatural the game. And... <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, you know, honestly, like I got I, I got a lot of influence. I used to watch the show a lot. Like I, I didn't finish, I didn't watch every season, but I used to really like it. Uh, like the first handful of seasons. And I was like, you know, okay, you have to burn the bodies, <laughs> burn the bones. You have to, you know, I, I was like researching uh, not only from that show, but just different folklore. Like there's the thing where you can, I wanted to, originally I was going to have you salt the corners of the room, you know, because that's like an old folk, folk tale yeah. to keep ghosts out, um, which they do in Supernatural, but it's more of like a ring. But supposedly if you put salt in all, all the cor four corners of the room. But then I thought that was just a tedious gameplay thing. So I just <laughs> settled more with uh, uh, lighting incense, which is yeah. more of a, a Japanese thing anyway, to, mm. to wall off spirits. Hmm. Um, so, yeah, I mean, obviously it's survival horror gameplay in, in that sense of the limited resources and, and everything else and you're exploring. And, um, I mean, I must say, I've not had the chance to play it as fully as I'd like. I have played a fair bit of it, and I've had my share of uh, moments where I've absolutely jumped out my skin as well. <laughs> so, <Nice>. um, <laughs> but you're also, uh, I mean, just supposed to talk about this briefly because you mentioned it's been delayed, but um, Date with the Night, which is the sequel, is mm -hmm. you're, you're kind of working on tying these all together kind of as a series like called Horror Business, which is going to obviously move from ghosts to its vampires next and then yeah and then is presumably yeah I, I do have a plan so yeah from the beginning i wanted to do a series and ghosts was like the first bet you know enemy i wanted to do and then i like i kind of want to go through and do a, a bunch of cool folklore monsters and i might not do all the you know the typical ones you'd expect and i i kind of want to do more obscure folk folktale monsters too um just to change it up but uh yeah so it's always been a series from from my perspective and i was just i, I have eight 
ideas for for games that I want to do. And I know I'm at least going to do the first three because uh, the second one I'm like in the middle of. And the third one I have like a really good plan and idea for. And then from there, I'll, I'll, I, I would like to continue. But I have if, if all goes well, we'll be like eight or so. Um, but I want to do them every year and have them be kind of, you know, shortish um, survival horror games, like, you know, four, four hours each and put them out every year. Uh, unfortunately, uh, I wanted to do Date with the Night for October, which you said, <clears throat> excuse me, is uh, featuring vampires instead of ghosts. Um, but I wasn't planning on porting everything myself uh, for Ghost at Dawn. And like you said uh, earlier, I actually re remade the game from scratch <laughs> um, to, to be able to port it because it, it being my first game, I, I made it. I made a good game, but I made a terrible app, <laughs> you know, because I have no coding yeah. experience. Um, so I had to like rewrite it so it would be able to be ported to consoles. And, and then in that process, I just, you know, listen to everyone's feedback and try to make it, you know, just make it as better and as polished as possible. And then also mm -hmm. more optimized so it could run on like any hardware. So uh, that's just, you know, so that took longer than, than I wanted. So that's, Unfortunately, going to push back uh, Day with the Night a little bit. But on the bright side, I'm I should be able to get Ghost of Dawn on like any anything that like can run a game. Like I'm gonna put it on your fridge, like Doom. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, I'm gonna try to put it on iOS and Android too. Um, hmm. So I have it like running like um, very optimized now so it should and it's not a very intensive game because it's a very old school style of game it looks yeah. really nice you know but it's still very it's cartoony looking and there, there's not a lot of physics and a lot a lot of uh because it's fixed camera too so it can like run on anything now so i'm hmm. pretty proud of that but it took a while to figure out yeah so um like when you say you're doing all that, is that like in terms of the actual like port it over to for, to go to PlayStation and stuff? Like the Sony just kind of go, is what you need to do, go for it kind of thing, or no yeah, I, whatsoever? I, I just got approved uh, as a publisher. Like I just got, um, yeah, approved to be in ID at Xbox and PlayStation partners. Like I just I literally got the news yesterday for PlayStation. <laughs> um, so, you know, typically you'd have a publisher that was set up or a lot of indies do. Um, but since I'm not going to work with a publisher, I, I just got it myself. So now I'm a publisher. Um, and so you, you have to like pitch your game to the consoles and they have to like like it and approve it. So I was pretty happy that I got accepted into uh, both. I'm still waiting to hear back from Nintendo, but I imagine that if I got Xbox and Sony, they'll probably they'll probably let me on Nintendo, too on the switch. Um, but yeah, so you, you pitch your game to them and they approve it or don't. And then basically now I'm like a, a official publisher on those platforms and they, they just send you like a, I can't, I signed an NDA, so I can't say what, but you, they basically you just send a list of things you have to do. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> My dogs are going nuts in the background. Um, Make sure you don't break the NDA. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's making sure you don't break the NDA. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, so, um, yeah, you just have a list of things you you have to do, and, and it's like nothing crazy. Like you just have to, you know, if you hit the A button, it signs into your Xbox account, like stuff like that. You know, yeah, basic stuff or, or functionality with the console itself. You know, but I can't. I'm, the NDA is like you can't say what you know, how you do that. But anyway, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, it just, they, they give you a list of things. And then you, you, once you say, Hey, I did all the things, they test it. And they're like, okay, you did the things. And then that, that's, that's it. They put it on the, on the store. So it, it takes a while. Cause you have to go back and forth. Cause it's, if it's your first time, you might be like, I think it works, you know, and then they'll tell you like, no, it doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> and then you have to fix it <laughs> and then they have to test it. So it's probably going to be a few a few month process, I imagine, going back and forth with both of them. Yeah, I mean, to be fair, given that it's something you learn from scratch, it's extremely impressive. Like to be at this point to be like, yeah, it's 
going on Xbox and PlayStation and potentially on the Switch as well. Yeah, yeah, I'm I'm like honestly blown away. Like at first, you know, it was like I want to do this as a hobby because I'm bored because I'm, you know, I'm just, everyone's stuck inside from the pandemic and then I started thinking like, uh maybe I can make some money on this, you know. Hmm and make it a new career, you know, and it just kept on, as I was working on it, I was just, and this sounds so like conceited to say, I was more impressed with what, <laughs> how it was coming along. It was going better than I thought it would, you know, and I, that sounds egotistical, but it, you know, I don't know. I don't know how to say it and not sound, <laughs> sound bad, <laughs> but it, it, I think it was just going well. I'm like, man, this is, this turned out okay. And I keep on showing it to people and if, you know, people are responding to it. And so I just put like all my effort into making like the best game I could. And I've been like working on it. Like, man, I work so much. It's like pretty much all my waking hours. Um, I I'm working on the game or the sequel and, and trying to make it better and as, as good as possible. So uh, it's fun. It's uh, rewarding, but it's definitely uh, a lot of work. And I definitely don't recommend it unless you have a lot of time and a lot of patience and a lot of like stick to itiveness because it's there's so much to it <laughs> to to make a game by yourself. Yeah. Especially if you don't have like a background in art and music and you have to hire people to do it, you know, and that, that was one thing that was nice is, you know, I didn't have to hire anyone to do anything. The only, uh, the only other people that worked on the game were uh, just friends and family who did some of the voice acting for me. Oh, that's um, cool. Yeah. Cause I was going to ask how, um, how you tackled the music and sound design. Cause you mentioned that you're a, a like a semi pro musician. Yeah. So you it all in house. Yeah. I wrote and, uh, played all the music myself mm. in the game. Um, with the except two of the songs are like old folk songs, so I didn't write them, uh, but it is me playing and singing on them. So if like, you start the game and you hear uh, Where Did You Sleep Last Night, which was made famous by Nirvana, but it's like really an old song, um, mm. that's me singing and playing all the instruments as like the game is starting. Mm. So that that was that that was a lot of fun uh especially because like i not only did i get to make a game but i got to make an album yeah. <laughs> you know I, like i sold the soundtrack too separately and I actually sold copies and i was like man i'm making more money on this <laughs> album than i ever did trying to sell my own music like you know in, in bands <laughs> yeah oh well, definitely um yeah so a question that we always ask is um throughout all the development and stuff what's been the biggest challenge that you faced when in game development so far um, just bugs <laughs> <laughs> just bugs like yeah i have i have adhd and so like i i make careless mistakes sometimes like you, you have to you know just for example you turn a camera on so it, it, because it's fixed cameras um one camera is on at a time but there's like hundreds of them you know because there's different positions that they're at so i might have to turn one on just to mess with something in the room just you know to see the angle for it and then yeah. i'll forget to turn it off and then like i'll play test the game and then i'm like oh the camera's on <laughs> <laughs> so you start the game but it's not like where it should be like it's just in a room and there's nothing in it you know yeah and so then you're like all right oh that takes another half hour to you know stop load fix rebuild you know like it's mm. just it's little stuff like that um, and just being one, you know, one set of eyes on the game, um, instead of having a whole team of people that might catch things, you know, so I yeah, have to just definitely. constantly play it. And I did have help with that. I had people volunteer, um, to play the game and like, give me notes and stuff. Um, but yeah, I mean, just catching, catching the bugs. And that was the thing, like, it's just so, it's so much more complicated than you think, like, especially yeah. like, uh doing an inventory for survival horror. Like I, I didn't, I never realized this, you know, playing survival horror games, but that one wasn't, that's not my dog. <laughs> that's somebody else's dog. <laughs> um, sorry. Uh, but playing survival horror games, uh, you don't realize that you have to keep track of every bullet, every item, every health of every enemy, and it has to save it and keep track of it at all times. Because every time you leave a room, it, it, like when you 
design a video game, it actually destroys the previous room you're in. And then if you go back into it, it rebuilds it like from the code, you yeah. know, it doesn't, it doesn't stay there. And so it had, you have to know, is that ghost still alive? Did he grab those matches? Did he grab the bullets? You know, did he see that jump scare? And so you have to keep track of every single thing and have it all saved and like reload properly, you know, it, depending on what the player did. And so it's just like thousands of variables and just keeping all that um, accounted for and uh, it all making sense is just like a taller order than I, I thought, you know, it was yeah. funny. You know, I was talking to another dev uh, one time and I was like, I made the demo like just the first hallway in four rooms. And I, I and I didn't worry about like a save system because it's just a demo, you know, like it's yeah. like a 10 minute demo. And <laughs> once I finished that, I'm like, yeah, this is pretty good. I'm like, all right, now I'm uh, looking through Unity, you know, the game engine. I'm like, all right, now where's the save button? <laughs> How do you save these things? <laughs> and like the other dev was just laughing so hard at me, like, yeah, the save button, okay. <laughs> You, you wish that that was a, yeah. a thing, but it's not. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> oh, you, have to, you have to build that yourself. <laughs> yeah. I know. Yeah, I can't even even think about the developmental side of the game. It's uh, oh, it's, it's definitely pain. kudos to you. God. Yeah, it, and that's the thing. Like, I, you know, I just I love uh, designing the game. Like, you know, mm. thinking about the layout of the places, the camera angles, the music, the enemy, you know, all the fun things you think about when, when you're designing a game, but then you have to spend like um, two months on just making sure that you can pass items from your inventory and then to the, the, the item box and then get it out properly. <laughs> you know, like that is so hard because it's not like a physical thing. It's like, Okay, if I click, if this if this icon is highlighted, and then I hit this button, destroy that picture, and then re you know reload a picture of it over here, and then make sure that if you had five bullets here, and then there's ten bullets there, that there's zero here, and then fifteen over there, <laughs> you know, like you have to keep track of that. You have yeah. to manually code all that, you know. And this may be like any other anyone who knows anything about coding, probably laughing at me like no shit, you moron. <laughs> but I wasn't. In, I have no experience with programming or coding, so you know it was all new to me. Again, I was just like, "All right, where's the inventory system button? Where's the save system button?" <laughs> yeah, and, and it's it's harder, presumably as well, to like have it where it's limited as well, like because yeah. all you're basically doing if you pick something up is destroying it and then attaching it to the player. But you've got to be able to say, "No, you can only attach X amounts to the player," and then after that, say, "You can't pick anything else up." Yeah, you're full. Oh. And, Yep. Yeah. And then you have to make sure that they all oh, like, and like the other thing too, is like it, the game just registers buttons. And so like, if you hit the pause button and you're in the menu and if you don't tell it to not control the player, the player will still just walk around <laughs> as you're <laughs> navigating the menu. You have to be like, I'm in the menu. Don't listen to player inputs. Like you have to control everything. You know, it's, it's really not like, like uh like making a level in like a game that has like a, a level maker where everything's like pre-built for you and i thought it was uh like unity was going to be more like that but it's like really co you have to really know how to program <laughs> so that that was the, that was the hardest challenge so that mm. it's like I, find, I feel like i know how to uh make a good game but like the program is just like in my way you know of course yeah yeah you know, and I think maybe some other devs are like the other way where they like programming and then they think about like the game design later, you know? Yeah. Because oh, yeah, definitely. I definitely think from, I don't know if that's like a top down way or whatever, just the, the opposite perspective where I'm like, I want to learn as little as possible. I just want to make the game. <laughs> yeah, no, definitely. <laughs> Did you have any ideas for uh, Ghost of Dawn that um, you wanted to include, but obviously with your developmental capabilities, it wasn't able to go in? Uh, no. Oh, one thing, one thing. So every other thing I would, if I wanted to do it, I would just learn how to do it. Hmm. You know, I would force, I'm like, fine, I'll figure out how to do something. <laughs> yeah. You know, cause I'm like, it can't be that hard. Somebody else did it. You know, you just, and like with YouTube and like, you know, Googling forums and stuff, like you can find answers, you know, on yeah. how to do things pretty easy. Um, but the one thing that I still haven't, that I want to add that I haven't added yet because I can't figure it out. And, and I, I will, whenever I figure it out, I'll add it. 
but uh, it always bothers me when people are in the elevator and they'll make Ben spin around in circles because they're just bored while yeah. like you know the few seconds. And I really wanted to do the Metal Gear Solid thing that if you do that, it'll make a puke. <laughs> <laughs> just to mess with them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, but I couldn't figure out like how to uh, like count how many times you've turned. You know, like I uh, maybe uh, another dev who's watching this can send me a message and tell me how to do it. But I, I, I've been trying to figure it out. I'm like, how, you know, how can you count how many turns? Hmm. <laughs> yeah. You get, get a message after this. So here's how to do the puke code. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that yeah that, but that's the one thing. <laughs> yeah. So on you, what you were saying then about like kind of coming with the game design first and then going to like, right, I'll figure out how to program that after. Did mm -hmm. you have um, kind of like maps and stuff like that already that you go, right, I want to make it look like this. Now, how do I do it? And you like, oh, sorry. Um, was that already there kind of thing? Like, it, you mean like either the in your head or out physically of like where you want to, like the level design and stuff? Oh yeah. 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 Um, I even, I put all my sketches in um, the downloadable PDF with the game, like the made an insider's guide with it. And you can actually see uh, my original like pencil drawings of the, the hotel um, you know, where everything is laid out. Obviously, like I changed things as, you know, I went along, but I, I yeah, I had a whole sketch of, um, of the hotel and where everything was. And then it was just a matter of just going through and making it, which, which is kind of like the, the, the frustrating thing for me right now, with date with the night is I have that for date with the night, but I just haven't had the time to make it because I've been so busy, uh, fine tuning and porting, uh, Goes to dawn. Hmm. Well, definitely. But now, um, yeah. But to flip that um, challenge question on its head, uh, what's been the most fun you've had? What's like a VR night and like the biggest moment you've had fun during the development? Uh, I love scaring people. <laughs> <laughs> Every time I see someone jump from one of the jump scares, I'm like, God. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. So yeah, coming up with. I mean, there's every, everything about it has been so rewarding. It's like the funnest project I've ever done. And yeah, just seeing people respond to it has been like amazing, you know, and it, it, it seems like the people who like, I, who, the people who like it and get it, like really like it, you know, and it, it seems like maybe it's not for everyone, but the ones who do like, you know, like I said, the ones who do get it, like just love it. And that just means like the world to me and just, you know, doing the characters, doing the music, doing the, the even the color design, you know, for making it just look cool and like kind of like a comic book or an anime um, yeah. has been a lot of fun, but yeah, the most fun is just, I love watching streamers or whoever play the game and get scared. I think I just laugh so hard. <laughs> Yeah, because it's something I think about a lot. Like I'm a huge horror fan. Like I read horror <laughs> books. Some of my favorite bands are like horror themed, you know, musicians like mm -hmm. Misfits or Murder by Death or um, uh, Amigo the Devil. I don't. Know. I can go on, but uh, you know, I just love horror video games, and I, I. So it's something I think about a lot. Like, what is scary? Why do humans get like? What is the psychology behind fear? And you know, how do how do you get someone to feel safe and then take that away. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, so they really don't expect it, you know, cause I, I love, you know, playing uh, horror games. I've played resident evil games like a million times. And I always think like, I would just love it. Oh no, no, sorry. This did happen one time. So I've played resident evil remake like a thousand times. And uh, I did, I decided to do a different like run, like a different, um, path through the game you know because you can take multiple paths i think i was like playing as chris instead of jill i usually like to play as jill and like the, one door just burst open and a zombie came out and i'm like that never happened to me before i didn't even know this was in the game this is amazing it's been over 20 years <laughs> and i i just never knew that and i just that just like tickled me pink i'm like oh, i wasn't expecting that this is mm. so awesome and so that that was actually like one of the inspirations, you know, I obviously I took a lot of inspiration from that game, but one of them was um, to do like randomized or very rare scares. So even if you play the game a few times, you might not get a scare uh, that I put in there. Like I put a lot of scares in there and you might, and I would say the average person is not going to see them all, 
Um, and so I wanted to do that to just make it, you know, just more fun. Cause that's the fun of horror is the unpredictability of it, I think. And mm-hmm. so you can always go back and play it. And I've, t- I've told people, I'm like, I'm going to go back every like couple of years or so and just add something new. And I'm not going to tell anybody, <laughs> you'll just see an update, you know, and you have to download it. And then if you play it again, <laughs> something crazy is going to happen. And I've done that like through, I don't, I've done that a bunch already with updates and just added more stuff. I even had <laughs> the one streamer was playing the game, uh, Vandra O gaming. And she was in a room where there's mannequins and she was like, was that mannequin's head turning and following me? And I was like, no, but that's a good idea. And so she quit <laughs> playing that, like right after that. And she's like, all right, I'm going to pick it up in two days, you know? And so I, between like, it was like a Wednesday and she was going to st- play it again on Friday. So between Wednesday and Friday, I actually programmed it. So the mannequin's heads do follow you. <laughs> so i made sure while she was streaming i was like go in that room again <laughs> yeah I, I was gonna say you've been you've been quite active and going in very, like people's streams when they're playing it and like, checking them out and stuff but uh, i didn't realize to that extent of just basically coming in and going right so let's how can we mess with people <laughs> oh yeah 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 I, I i think that was i can't remember if i if that's the only one i've added because someone actually thought or or uh, there's probably been a few times where someone suggested something I'm like, no, that's a pretty good idea. I'll do that. <laughs> and so like, while I'm already patching like a, some kind of bug, I'll just like quickly do that <laughs> thing to scare them. Mm. Yeah. Have you had, um, just cause the, the, like, especially with shorter games and with like, horror games stuff, there's speed running kind of comes up quite quickly. Is, is that what happened with Ghost of Dawn or? Um, not not as much as I thought. I did do a contest. Um, so one uh, one thing I didn't mention and that I did for Ghost of Dawn that I'm doing for every single vampire in Date with the Night. I did this for some of the ghosts in, in uh, Ghost of Dawn. Was I would do contests, just simple Twitter contests. You know, like just share or retweet or whatever. And I'll you know I'll pick a random winner and then I'll model a ghost after you and put your name in the credits. You know, just to kind of you know, say thanks to the community or whatever. Yeah. And uh, so that's what I'm doing with Date with the Night is every single, um, every single vampire is someone who's won a contest or is like um, uh, a streamer that's like voice acting their their vampire. Um, sorry, I lost the train of thought. What was the question? <laughs> <laughs> I am. You, you did mention something about ADHD earlier, so yeah, yeah. Sorry, <laughs> I, I just I, 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 You guys I, I, could I, probably just say hi, and I would just talk for an hour, and you'd have a <laughs> podcast. <laughs> I, um, no, I was saying about um, if there's been much in terms of speed run of the game. Oh, okay, yeah. Sorry. So I ran a contest for uh, to you could be a, a vampire in Day with the Night if you had the best, uh, whoever had the best speed run score and goes to dawn got to be mm. a vampire in day with the night yeah that's where i was going <laughs> <laughs> so I, uh, I did it then and one guy got um 25 he beat the game in 25 minutes i was like holy shit <laughs> <laughs> he beat it faster than like i could like i did you know i was like well, i really wasn't expecting that uh so I, I put yeah, he's yeah, he's gonna be in in the game. I even even changed it in uh, Ghost of Dawn. I put like uh, the picture of his vampire character uh, on the wall, and it said that he's this you know the world speedrun record holder. So I haven't seen um, other people than that one contest, but uh, it was still really cool to see. And he you know he recorded the whole thing. I watched the whole run, and it was it was crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. five minutes. It's just like wow. Because the, I mean, one of the reasons I was going to ask that is just going back to like what you were saying about messing with people who were playing it and like mm-hmm. taking ideas, like whether if people were speed running it regularly and like going certain routes and stuff, you'd be like, I could put a scare there. Yeah. <laughs> um, not not to give you ideas about terrorizing anyone. Yeah, <laughs> no, it, I think I, I I do have to hold off for a little bit because there's like there's there's like scares in every room. You know, and but it's, you still might not see them all, but it's like, I, you know, how many more am I going to add to where it's just like you're just walking and something's pop? You know, I didn't want to add so much that like something's just popping out at you every two steps. You know, of course, yeah, like, yeah. You, you have to, you have to, you have to let things breathe a little bit, otherwise it loses its its punch. 
Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, I think that actually that guy was like, yeah, you know, I felt the game was a little easy. I'm like, oh, okay. All right. <laughs> right again. I added this part where there's like this ambush that like everyone dies at. <laughs> <laughs> and it was funny i was streaming the game um too on twitch and i was like you know everyone says this part's too hard i don't think it's too hard and i did it and i like died immediately i was like all right all right i'll make it a little easier <laughs> and so i i've tuned it a few mm-hmm. times but no yeah the speedrunner said it was a little too easy so i did add like this really intense hard part after he said that <laughs> yeah it's like you know this, this isn't that bad <laughs> oh, <never mind. laughs> you know, it, that's the thing that's really funny about difficulty in games that you don't realize like i can tweak just the littlest thing in certain parts and it goes from like beyond easy to like impossible and it's just like the how close the ghost is to the door you know mm. like by mm. inches you know what i mean because then it just changes how you know what i mean like do you have enough time to reload if you empty a clip blah, blah, blah yeah. you know and it's like you really have to fine tune it like you know play test it see what other people do it's it's you know it's it's harder than you think you know to to get the difficulty right yeah um and i mean from my own experience with with playing and enough games and doing like challenges on games is like that if there's any degree of randomness like the way things just like that that can throw you off like hugely you just be like oh yeah i know exactly what i'm doing on this except in this one instance where something <laughs> just varies yeah like, like an enemy takes a path like five degrees difference or something yeah yeah and th- i noticed that uh so i there is a random element to the ghost too they actually their speed and their health is is random each playthrough and so they can come at you faster or slower or they might take more bullets and I know people were like, some people would get frustrated over that, but I'm like, well, I'm trying, like, it's a survival horror game. Exactly, <laughs> like, I'm yeah. trying to keep you, you know, on your toes yeah. a little bit, you know? And then that's always the fine line, too, with the, you know, some people, it's, you never know what some people find easy and what some people find hard and or fun and or other people find frustrating. So, you know, I, I would try to, you know, for a while, I would try to please everyone, but eventually you like, you learn, you're like, you know what, I just got to, I got to do what's best for the game, you know, and, yeah. that, and so not everyone is going to love it, but the people who, who get what you're trying to do, you know, you got to please them, I think. Yeah. But you do, you do have obviously um, quite strong and supportive community around it, which is, it's been good to see. And presumably uh, again, that's something that's helped you can keep going and, and doing all this with the game and like the amount of work you put into it is, oh yeah easier by having that support there i suppose oh yeah for sure you know it it, it makes it easier because then i could you know when you work on a project that can take years you know it's sometimes it's hard to see the uh the light at the end of the tunnel and you know having a community of support just makes it so much better because i can i can share a little bit or uh, and then they'll be like oh wow that's really cool or i i even like one thing i love doing is asking questions on twitter like hey would you rather see this or would you rather see that like what do you think is cooler you know and the people chime in and <clears throat> have you know sometimes they have like really good ideas that i'm like all right i'm, I'm stealing that. <laughs> that's great <laughs> you know and then it just makes them feel like a, a part of it too and it feels like it, it makes it feel like i'm not making a game alone too which can be you know daunting but to, to you know throw it out there and have other people give you feedback is is great yeah so um from here like you're obviously in the middle of um the console ports and everything else with that and then once that's done getting back to date with the night so Mm -hmm. i think uh pretty every for the foreseeable future at least what what comes next is probably pretty planned out there's not really any surprises along the road it doesn't seem like uh, you mean as far as like in the series or just like releases? Uh, yeah, just in terms of one of the things we usually like, we'll ask obviously what's coming next, but like with you, with oh, you I think that's kind yeah, of the consoles, out and... yeah, consoles are next and then I'm going to do mobile um, and then, then the sequel and then uh, we'll just go from there. <laughs> See, you know, hopefully I'll, I'll have like a good system down to have uh, 
date with the night, be able to be ported to everything else very quickly, you know, cause I'll have the experience in the, uh, you know, the kind of everything built up for, for Ghost of Dawn, which is, that's like part of the, 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 what took me so long with Ghost of Dawn is I wanted to refine it so that way I can make sequels fast, you know, like make, I, I kind of made it so I can scale and, and, and make more stories with the same characters and just different types of stories and enemies and scares, you know, like I made basically made my own game engine um yeah. with it so you know it just took a little bit longer to make the first one but then i'm hoping once i kind of get my my uh my flow going you know i'm gonna be this the sequels will be more consistently put out and actually i do want to put out like smaller like sh you know micro games too in the series you know um which i don't know i haven't talked about that much but i do have a plan to do like a very short like hour-long game um that you know, i don't know if i'll give it out for free or for like a couple bucks but I want to do that um, maybe next year. Cool. That sounds that sounds really interesting. Definitely. And um, is that with the, with the mobile, like when once you get into that, I think presumably the toughest part of that will be because obviously they don't have controllers or keyboards or anything. You have to mm -hmm. do, like the input has to be on the touch screen. Yeah. That's going to be. Is that a new thing for you to find out once um, you get there, or I, I I'm I have. Like I know what I'm gonna do. I, I haven't done it yet, but I've watched like tutorials on it. It's it's I don't think it's that that difficult to put touch controls and a lot of uh and I'll have it so you can use a controller too if you want to. Like you can Bluetooth connect oh, yeah, close, yeah. to an iPad or um, your iPhone or Android or whatever. Hmm. But yeah, I was I was thinking about it. I'm like, okay, it'll be hard because if you think about you know, Resident Evil games or Ghost of Dawn, you know, you, for most shooter games, you hold L to aim and then R to shoot. And that my, my genius I would do is like, I know I'm just going to make it one button <laughs> and, <he just> shoots. <laughs> yeah. and that'll be the touch control. <laughs> and so I, you know, I came up with a, a different touch control, uh, control scheme. So, uh, it shouldn't be too hard. Actually, it might be really fun to play it that way, you know, with just the touch controls. Oh, definitely. I was going to say, we always ask this question, but obviously I know you're very deep in development, obviously being a solo developer, but have you had any chance to, um, to play any horror games this year that have released? Or uh, This year? I'm trying to think. Yeah, oh yeah, I, I have to. I play game, I still play games all the time. Hmm. I know I've been, lately I've been taking a non-horror game sabbatical and playing like other other stuff out there. Yeah. But um, man, I, I can't. I play so many games I can't think of the last horror game. I think it was Mundon I played. Okay. I didn't I didn't finish that. That was pretty cool. Uh I didn't finish it yet. Um I played um what's the one that it's like the VHS style? Uh Puppet Combo. I played a few uh, yeah, of yeah. games this year. Um damn, I'm trying to think. Um I play anything that goes on Game Pass. I usually play right away if it's mm -hmm. a horror game. Uh, Those who remain, I played that one. That was pretty cool. Oh yeah, that was base, Game Pass. Um, yeah, I'm sure I have. I just can't think of. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> no, yeah. Is there um, anything that you've seen on the socials and stuff that's been really piqued your interest? Any games? Uh, yeah, games? Heartworm. I think looks awesome. Mm. Yeah. Um, that one is probably the one I'm indie game wise. I'm most excited about. Also, I'm really uh, I haven't gotten around to it, but I really want to play Alone in the Dark, mm. uh, and <laughs> especially because how similar it seems to my game. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> with a detective like a detective wearing the same outfit, like <laughs> in the yeah. same time period, he drinks whiskey to heal, and so I'm like, oh, because they were actually supposed to uh, release like a week after Ghost of Dawn, and then they delayed it. And I joked, I'm like, oh yeah, they're scared of me. But then I'm like. <laughs> Wait, were they? <laughs> the games are very similar. Yeah. <laughs> and just for the record, I didn't know that game was coming out <laughs> when, I, when they ghosted it on. Yeah. Yeah. No, that, I mean, those similarities, are, it's, it's always cool to because I think you go to a certain period setting and it kind of almost naturally suggests itself, right? It's like, you know, that hard boiled detective uh, oh, yeah. archetype. And it, yeah. How does he heal? Whiskey. Mm -hmm. Of course, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's so. So they're the kind of like that. That's one of the next ones on your radar to play. Is 
check check out the competition <laughs> yeah. Well, the dog. yeah i mean i don't consider that competition i i'm i'm just, I, I, i'm just excited about that game as a yeah, survival yeah. horror fan you know um it was like like what, what other game that was really good? oh signalis that game was great you know um Oh, Alyssa. I just played Alyssa this year, too. Oh, that yeah. was, you know, another fixed cam survival horror mm. that I liked. Um, no, actually, I think it's great that there's, like, this renaissance of uh, fixed cam indie horrors. Like, it's coming mm. back. I'm like, all right. Like, you know, it wasn't when I started. There, I, I, the only one I knew of was Tormented Souls mm. um, before I started working at Ghost of Dawn. I'm like, all right, cool. They're, like, it works. Like, you know, there's an audience for this. And now yeah. it seems like it's blowing up again, which is only, in my opinion, good for for me and for all of us because more people understand and like the genre. So it's cool to see all these other games um, that are doing similar things. Yeah. Cool. I mean, oh, sorry. The amounts that, like, like me and Will have spoken to on this podcast and, like, <laughs> all, like, new survival horror that inspired by, like, the older Resident Evil and stuff. But... Mm-hmm. They've also all got their own identities as well. Like they might all be fixed camera or so they, you know, fixed camera in the survival horror games. But there's there's some unique sides to them. Obviously, yours is with that like 1940s missing girl, the Japanese angle and everything else. Yeah, and, yeah. Um, and it's yeah, anime style looking. and yeah. Um, and then obviously, Signalis has got its own art style. Tormented Souls is its own unique thing. Um, all the games that we've spoken to like more yeah. recently, like it's. It's cool that it's it's like a genuine kind of genre revival rather than just yeah. clones. I think yeah. that's yeah. probably the best thing. Yeah, that that was like one of the big things that I, I wanted to do. I'm like, I didn't want to make poor man's Resident Evil. I wanted to make something inspired by Resident Evil, but then have it be its own thing. You know, yeah. which was like to you know combine anime and detective noir into survival horror, which I thought you know surprised no one else did before because it kind of well i guess they did alone in the dark but you know to to do more of that i guess you know and and to do uh you know a different take on it i guess Mm. yeah um so before we kind of round up obviously um in terms of ghost of dawn currently available on steam and uh date with the night can be wishlisted on there as well yeah at the moment yep um is there also is Ghost of Dawn able to be wishlisted on PlayStation and Xbox yet, or is that still being set? Not up? yet. I, I just got like approval from the platform, so I, I'm not totally. Uh, uh, I haven't made the store pages yet, but <clears throat> excuse me, that'll be up soon. Uh, it'll be on Epic Games very soon. Uh, you can wishlist it on Epic Games if you prefer Epic Games, um, and it's going to be on humble it's good like basically like by the end of the year ghost of dawn will be on like like i said you can play it on your fridge probably (laughs) (laughs) i'm gonna put it on everything yeah (laughs) yeah so we'll obviously put what links we have in terms of available wish lists now in in the description of the video um and then as it comes along if people are interested in it on the playstation or xbox Make sure you do wish list it there. Make sure you wish list it on your fridge if you want to play it. <laughs> um, yeah. Tell Alexa, pick up Day with the Night for your fridge. <laughs> <laughs> or Ghost of Dawn, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, um, I mean, we're sure, we're sure, like, given the response to it so far, it'll hopefully get an awful lot of interest and, and like, oh, definitely. more people be able to play it is always a good thing. Yeah, mm. I hope so. So, um, yeah, we'll include that in the video and, and ask everyone to show the support in whatever way they can. And, uh, yeah, I'm, I just again, thank you very much for coming along and talking to us. It's been an absolute pleasure. Yeah, you know, thank you, guys. Happy to talk. And, uh, yeah, with everyone, we will uh, thank you very much for listening, and we'll see you again in the next one. This has been Talking Terror, the official podcast of the Horror Game Awards. Thank you very much for listening. Check out the links in the description for more info on where to follow our guests in order to support them and keep up to date with their work. The Horror Game Awards will be airing live on YouTube on Saturday the 16th of December. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel to avoid missing out on what promises to be a very exciting night of awards and game reveals, as well as future episodes of this podcast and other content. Thanks again for joining us, and we hope to see you next time.